Saturday, the 10 finalists you voted for, but which will be revealed as your favourite song of 2003? The record of the year, Saturday 5.45. Partying in Liverpool tomorrow night, that's at 11. But now on ITV1, it's Soccer Night. Holders Liverpool proved too strong for Blackburn in the last round. Once again, they've got a taste for this competition. We have a good side out, I can tell you. And also, it's a competition that uh, we like. We've got a soft spot for it. The big sums Bolton are on a roll at the moment. Everton were their latest oh, victims in the punch, Premiership. But it only falls to Per Branson. of the Blues, life for David Moyes hasn't been a bed of roses. Tonight at Middlesbrough he has a selection problem. We all know that it's an important time that we need to stick together and hope we get these couple of uh, wins we get you back up and run. Manchester City against Spurs always equals glamour. It's more than two decades since that defeat at Wembley. Now Kevin Keegan's present day squad badly needs a lift. Time perhaps for the sought after Nicholas Anelka to deliver. And the Reds are in the black country. Eric Jemba-Jemba was the match winner against Leeds. Will United be on song tonight against West Brom? A very good evening and a warm welcome to another tense and gold-packed night of thrills in the Carling Cup. It's the business end of the competition with no fewer than five Northwest Premiership teams in fourth round action, all aiming for a quarter-final place. And I can promise you some real drama. Casting an expert eye over proceedings are Kenny Dalgleish and Steve McMahon. Glad you could make it. Ready for it? What's we'll staying up late for? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll start with a cracker at Anfield, where holders Liverpool played host to Sam Allardyce's resurgent Bolton Wanderers, who've kept five successive clean sheets. Liverpool recall keeper Jersey Dudek in place of Chris Kirkland. French teenager Anthony Letalek also made the starting lineup. Back for Bolton after injury were Yori Jorkiev and Emerson Tom. Now hold tight because it was a classic cup time. Alistair Mann was lucky enough to be in the commentary box. Jorkaev. Neat oh, flick of the ankle on Jorkaev and a Bolton free kick. Came back after injury with uh, a goal which was heavily deflected on the way in. It was at the weekend against Everton. Meanwhile, Bolton have a corner. Traore slamming it into the cop end. And a real chance and a goal for Jardel. Well, he's one of the best headers of a ball in Europe. And you can't leave him unmarked, what, seven or eight yards out from goal. And he just planted the header past Jertzi Duda. Fourth minute of the game, Juraj Jokiev with a corner. Mario Jardel with a header. Easy. No chance for Duda. European Golden Boot winner. Doesn't miss those. And he hasn't had a single start in the Premiership. But he has his third goal. All in the League Cup. Or the Carling Cup, of course. As the sponsors have it now. Foul, meanwhile, has left Murphy on the deck. So looks like he's going to crack this as hard as his left foot can do. And it was a good attempt, and Paul's missed it. And in the end, scooped over the bar by Sneetcher. It was knocked onto him by Poole, who atoned for spilling it. Really hit it venomously. And you can see he saves it, knocks it onto Reza. There, and up and over. Ball Heskey's there! 
Just over the top. Oh, what a start to this game. Chances, two of them now for Liverpool. And both sides are committing men forward. Let's play again by Otsemabo, and once more. Oh, he looked for the return, Natalek. Terrific challenge, Heskey falls to the floor. And at last, Liverpool find a way through ball to Wanderers, and it was courtesy of John Otsemabo, really. Heskey couldn't quite find a way of... Uh, Finishing it off, lovely play by the fullback. No offside, terrific block. I think it was Emerson Tome and Heskey fell to the floor off balance. That's a great block by Tome. Heskey's header on, Metallic on the chase, Barnes got there. And the referee adjudges that that's a foul. free kick in a threatening area this challenge from Barnes I think in fairness the referee's probably right there he's missed the ball and got the man so this could be a right footed Murphy or a left footed John Honoriza it's Murphy it was just just over the top see it dropping Kevin Poole could see it dropping too and he flung himself at it just, just too much on it and that again beat in the air by Kishan but there's no aerial challenge of any note on him in the most crucial moments of the game so far meanwhile Barnes gets the better of Riza terrific header by Pedersen and that was a whisker away from doubling Bolton's grip on the tie. But once Barnes had got the better of both Murphy and Reza, it was a terrific opening, wasn't it? The Bolton could quite easily be 2-0 up here. Reza. Murphy. Heskey trying to stay on side up ahead of him. Deal with Murphy. El Hajdi or pass stayed on side. Real opportunity. Super tackle by Gardner before he could even pull back the trigger. Scored some important goals in the League Cup last season. El Hajdi. Quickly taken corner. Scrambled away off the line by Camper. Not the most conclusive defending, but effective enough. Thread it through for the Frenchman, given away though by Fischan. Here's Jorkaev. And here is Jardel, no offside. Good save by Dudek, away by Riza. Liverpool looked for the flag. It wasn't forthcoming. Jardel couldn't quite get his shot away, and Dudek spoils it. And it was a Hesky cinema on Golly forward line against Birmingham on Sunday is restored of course uh, Cinema Pongale won a penalty against Birmingham as well which was hotly disputed by Steve Bruce but he's almost going to get his first touch now from that Reese across and I think that was a shot you know it wasn't the driven cross Reese from almost an impossible angle slammed it goal down First attempt was to try and pick out for a cinema Pongale. The second was to have a go. And it wasn't too far wide. Inches. Kuehl. Smicha. Diao. Nice to pick out Kuehl Murphy.
the cop end. And two goals on the evening. Salif Diaz cross. And this time, Danny Murphy doing what Mario Jardel did in the first half. And scoring with a firm header, which goalkeepers can do nothing about. of an hour of normal time. I wonder what this fantastic time has in store for us. But of course the prospect of extra time and penalties looming to decide it this evening. No question. 
So, you're a joker. Is this the decisive moment? It is off the inside of the post and Bolton Wanderers for the third time lead at Anfield. Well, he's all smiles. They've flicked off the inside of the post. Dudek had gone the correct way. Can't stop those. Gerard with the throw. Another look at the watch by the referee. He blows. It's the last whistle of the contest. And Bolton Wanderers have seen off the holders here at Anfield. An incredible game. They led three times. Twice Liverpool found a way back. And in the end, off the inside of a post, a Euro Jorkea penalty sends Bolton Wanderers into the quarterfinals of the Carling Cup. And finally, in the end, for us, it's in the history of Bolton Wanderers and an enormous victory winning at Anfield, like you know, and uh, no matter what the competition, it goes down in history as far as we're concerned. I think we didn't uh, deserve to go through. I think we let ourselves down. Um, we let the club, we let the fans down, and I'm very angry because I don't think that some of the players performed to the level they should have performed. A disappointed man, but I told you it was a cracker. Kenny, did uh, Bolton deserve that? Yeah, I think he just about deserved it. Three goals away from home. Uh, it's, it's a good effort. And, and the bonus of that early Jardel goal, it must have settled the nerves. Yeah, obviously you go to Anfield, you want a good start, and uh, they did get a good start. But they built on it, and that's only the second goal of the season, I think. Uh, he had to go off the Martin Lee. Just a straightforward corner. Disappointing, uh, no, Kenny, the, the, the defending by, by Triori there. I he think. just gets underneath it a bit and he's got a clear header straight in the back of the net. There's no. No, of course, uh, Liverpool quickly got a bag into it with Danny Murphy's goal, but then we had that, that what we thought might have been a pivotal moment when uh, Jokiev, we thought, had scored. Yeah, I think he thought he scored as well. Um, he's a little bit unlucky. It's just comes from a long throw, he can't get it out of the box. Uh, it gets knocked back in and he, uh, he turns it into goal. I think it comes off his his right shoulder, but the referee thinks because of his movement, it's come off his left arm. I mean, Steve, it almost looked ball to arm. It's the exaggeration, it's the follow through from his left arm that, that has made sure that the referee has given the, the, give the free kick. You know, you can see, it's, it's his right arm, but it's the, it's the exaggeration with his left arm that, that's made sure the referee has said no goal. So after that controversial moment, perhaps poetic justice when that free kick went in, and what a free kick. Oh, that's a great free kick. I think the, the best compliment you can pay it as uh, Dudek doesn't move, he's rooted to the spot, that's a good wall, the end of the wall jump, but he's even got it up over them and back down inside the post, it's, it's a real good free kick. Well, he's a quality player, isn't he, and, and it's, it's, I'm astounded that that is his first goal this season. He's probably got plenty of assists, but, but what a goal. Now, we thought that might have clinched it, but Liverpool straight back, refused to lie down, tribute to the fighting spirit, I suppose, Smith's his goal. Yeah, they were possessing the ball, Bolton, and it turns over. Uh, middle of the pitch and Steven Jerry knocks a decent pass in. Charlton just come on his sub and got the wrong side. Smithers taking it forward and hits a decent shot. Can Liverpool be, dis be disappointed? I, I think he will. He's got he's got a hand to it. Oh, it's a weak hand at that, but but he's still got a hand to it and I think he'll be a little bit disappointed. It's not as if it's gone in the top corner. It's gone sort of middleish, you know. So no, I, I think confess I thought then extra time, no problem. That was nailed on, I think we all thought that. Yeah, definitely but I mean it's a penalty. There's no two ways about it. It's a, it's a nailed-on penalty. Yeah, Gerard Houllier, no complaints with the decision. I mean, it, and, it, and, it, and it just clinched everything, didn't it, at the end for Bolton? Well, I think it, it's... You've seen um, Big Sam there, and he, he was delighted. I think he, he might have felt robbed, it was, especially them equalising so late on. But it's a rush challenge. You can't do that. It's the wrong leg as well. So, you know, Bolton got what he deserved on the night. And he's, he's a penalty, good. dying seconds of a cup tie, Kenny. Yeah. Where do you put yours? Uh, over. <laughs> <laughs> but that was but absolutely he's, superb, wasn't it? Spot on. Yeah, and he used every energy possible could to the frame. Yeah. And it was lucky it's just gone in. Yeah, but I mean, at the end of the day, Bolton will sit back and say, you know, we deserve that, we went to Anfield. Yeah, well, sometimes with the Carling Cup, it depends how serious the teams take it. I think both teams took it seriously, despite the fact that Liverpool six changed, I think, Bolton had five from Saturday's matches, so... Uh, of the weekend matches, I think um, that tells you both took it seriously. And one bright spot, I suppose, of Liverpool, they've lost the, hand, the grip on the trophy, but uh, young man, Otsamba, what do you think about the case performance? He played well, he, he had a good game, he, he's got plenty of pace, we've seen that, he was up and down the line, um, he's not frightened to go forward, and 
that bit more quality at the end of it, and he would have been arguably probably uh, one of the match yeah. for, for Liverpool. But a good performance, he can be pleased with himself. And he's English. <laughs> well, uh -huh. Not with an English name. <laughs> It'd be worthwhile if they get somebody like Sir him through, uh, despite losing the match. But this, it, it qualifies you for the UEFA Cup, and it's a disappointment to get out of a Cup competition. But Bolton now, I mean, they're fans of the chances. Well, do we think they would do? Uh, they certainly went there uh, tonight and they, they played an attacking formation. Or caught you and your drive and, and bar in the middle of the pitch. And okay. it's a good draw, a home draw. Yeah, OK, that's great, thank you. After the break, we concentrate on Manchester City's visit to White Hart Lane. 20 years ago, David Pleat danced that jig of joy at Main Road. He kept Luton Town in Division 1 at City's expense. Tonight, the Spurs caretaker boss was planning a Carling Cup exit for the Blues. Full highlights after this short break. Hello, I'm Dave. Hello, Hello Dave. Dave. I've been clear for the last 12 months. I hardly even thought of playing a guitar. Well done. But today I heard this. 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 You know you have to have it. And this, Air Guitar 3. The last Air Guitar album in the world ever. Right now, at Argos, there are some great Christmas deals. Save £50 on this T-Mobile Samsung S300 and get this Samsung DVD player free. Don't ask. It's a fancy dress party. Glen Morangy, take yourself to the Glen of Tranquility. Welcome back. So the current League Cup holders are out. Gerard Houllier's side de defeated by a spirited Bolton effort. Next up, Manchester City, who desperately needed a win at Spurs to reignite their season and give their fans hope of a trophy. City were still without David Seaman, Sanji Hai and Paolo Wanchop. Nicholas Anelka and Robbie Fowler started up front in search of City's first goal in seven hours. Our man at White Hot Lane, John Champion. Good atmosphere around White Hart Lane, even though it's not full. And here is Robbie Keane. Ella Gord came out. And Keane off balance in the end was fairly well on target. Spurs will be looking for a touch of inspiration. They, like City, have been too short of goals for comfort of late. And who better to inspire than the young Irishman, Robbie Keane? Tariqa. Ricketts. the penalty area and the turn working space for the shots which could not have been more precise like a snooker player with a long pot there was a very small space to be found and my, he found it well. Anderson. Much more conviction about Tottenham. And Keane lost his footing. It is a free kick. and Carr. But now it's just down to Darren Anderton. Eligord trusted to luck as to where the ball would go. Boyer, oh, yeah. Gary Doherty! Keeper didn't know much about it, but he did his job. But it all stemmed from the initial strike from the free kick by Darren Anderton, which was a skimmer, caused problems for Eligord. Lemay got a piece of it, 
And then when the ball was played back in, Gary Doherty seemed a certain goal scorer until it was hooked clear by Sumé. Robbie 
Keane, he could finish it. Keane for Tottenham. Denied by Alagorn. It's a crazy finish to this time. And there's still a minute to play. Carr. It's enough to have coaches on the sidelines holding their heads in their hands. But now Tottenham with the numerical advantage. Konczewski, Robbie Keane, ready can Tell you why I said it half time. <laughs> I think you know I'm, I'm not one of these managers who let cameras into the dressing room, um, but make no mistake about it, half time was an experience, I think, you know, for me as a manager because, as I said to you before, you know, I didn't feel some of them really realised that, you know, we, we, we were three games away from uh, the Millennium Stadium here tonight. Well, guys, out of Europe last week, now out of the League Cup, it's just not going out for City, is it? Very poor first half, very, very poor. And I mean, what I can guess what he said at half time. You don't have to be uh, Einstein to work that one out. I mean, any chance of running around at least? And very, very disappointing first half. Second half was more like the city. They attacked, they, they made good chances, and it was a bit more like themselves. Yeah. Kevin's got to try and lift him a bit, hasn't he, Kenny? I mean, he, he must be trying to do that. Of course he will. Uh, he won't be enjoying what's going on. But it's it's not the pride that he takes, it's the pride that the players take in their performance and the pride they take in representing the club. I mean, they lost the last goal, at least it was more like Manchester City who were pushing forward in the second half and trying to get themselves back in the game. Robbie gets a great leap for the, for the goal, knocks it in, and at least they get caught in the break trying to save something, but they, they showed a little bit too much too late. And the problem at the defense. start was they, they had, a, they had a, a poor start, conceded early, and then when you're trying to get back into the game, they then concede a sloppy second goal, didn't they? Yeah, um, and when you're in a bad run, you make a mistake, you're going to be punished for it. As Trevor Sinclair gets one touch on it, but no second one, and there's a fight, and that's Pastiga's it's first some, goal, I think. some Man City up, it really did. Every, it's static, it's, yeah. it's poor, it's body language said a lot about the players. It's a great finish, but poor defending, and there could have been three or four at half-time, and... I say, no wonder, no wonder Kevin's had a go. But in, right fairness, so. in fairness, I mean, they came back in the second half, and I mean, all right, a bit of a gift perhaps, the goal, but Fowler on the score sheet again? Well, again, I mean, they haven't scored for, what, eight hours nearly, but, but yeah, I mean, as you said, when we were watching it, it's a great leap. Keeper could have done better from a standing jump. I wonder, I wonder whether the goalkeeper's trying to hit it. <laughs> Maybe think he was going to get punished for a, a pass by or something. He shouldn't, he shouldn't win that header, should he, against No, but it's a great leap. It is, he's got up early, and, and, and from a standing jump, the keeper got no chance then. And Robbie smelt a goal, and that gave then City the impetus to go forward, and, and he should have, and maybe, have got, have got an equaliser, but too much too late. Briefly, they'll be coming home north, heads down. How, how can he lift them? Well, they've got to lift themselves as well. I mean, it's one thing the manager pointing out your mistakes, it's another thing you yourself going to correct them. They don't look as if they started again, and if you don't start the game well, it's very difficult to lift yourself up and, and get a good performance out of it. Play for a bit of pride now. Play as you did the second half. Play for, play for Manchester City and the supporters, because they deserve better. OK. Well, after the break, the chance to catch up on the progress of last year's runners-up, Manchester United, who are in action at the Hawthorns. Now, this fixture has had a history of drama, excitement and goals over the years, including a 5-3 thriller back in December 1978. Tonight always promised to be a touch tighter, and so it proved. Touch wide by the... Stretched arms of Russell Holt. Think you know your football? 
Test your football knowledge with Interactive Championship Challenge. It's a DVD game. It's a football quiz. You use your DVD remote and it's fully interactive. Football heaven. So challenge your mates and test your trivia. Check out the team stats. Relive the moment. Then play it again and again. Interactive Championship Challenge. It's a DVD game. So play it now. Now, Manchester United's Premiership hopes took a knock at Chelsea at the weekend. Tonight, United were again on the road, facing a tricky-looking tie against First Division leaders West Brom. Not surprisingly, Sir Alex Ferguson once again blooded the kids, the likes of Kieran Richardson, Danny Pugh, Paul Tierney, and new team captain Phil Bardsley all starting. Guy Mowbray, watch the action at the Hawthorne. Dickier. Ball was on to find Jason Kumas. Clement White. Only Holtz in the middle. Holtz trying to flick on. That's a chance. What a goal. Burns Haas with an absolute belter. It's a lovely cross from Neil Clement. Good knock back too from Holtz. And what about that for a finish? The striker's goal. All the way across towards Haas. Needed the touch from Danny Pugh's head. And Haas winds up the long one into the area. Holtz being, I think you could say, tightly marked. Flicked across by a United head. Is that a penalty? It is a penalty. Danny Pugh. And I think he knew it. Taken down by Kumas, and as he got into the area, it is a wild lunge from Pugh. Jason Kumas, who scored three goals in his last two games with the chance to make it West Bromwich Albion 2, Manchester United 0. Great save from Roy Carroll. What a stop from the Northern Ireland International. What a boost that could be for Manchester United young guns. Dickier. And Shea's header will call the Kumas here. Clemens inside. Kumas looks into the area. And there's Dicchio. Great climb. Good power on that too, but not matched by the direction. Here's Richardson. Now Bellion. Spun off the shoulder of Sean Gregan, who won't catch him. Good ball from Bellion. Nicky butts out a straight at Holt. Bellion was away, he had a look up, and saw who was arriving. It's a great clip for Nicky Butt. Gardner. Hulse. Good knockdown to Dickio. Now the cavalry comes. Johnson. Some of the momentum lost. United have got numbers back in defence. O'Connor. Here's Haas. The cross in early. Dicchio going for it. Off the crossbar, Danny Dicchio. Carroll a beaten keeper. Less than three minutes into the second half. Albion almost doubling their lead. Ronaldo. Advantage with United. Richardson with the ball. Step over all three. Cleverson. Touched wide by the outstretched arms of Russell Holt. Ronaldo teasing O'Connor, 
setting up the World Cup winner, and that was going in. This almost in from Danny Dicchio. Gilchrist. Dicchio. Clement. And O'Connor. Johnson lets him run through. Might have to go back towards Neil Clement. He can swing the crossover. Oh, what a goal! Scott Doby's first touch of the ball. Congratulations all round for Scott Doby. What a dream introduction that is. O'Connor ran out of room. Clement just swung one hopefully in. And look at that for a header. Away from goal. Had to adjust and flick. Marvellous moment for Doby. 2-0 West Bromwich Albion. Cleverson. Butts hanging around the edge of the area. Richardson lets it drift wide to Ronaldo. He'll come inside on the right foot. Parried by Holt. Up goes belly on. And hooked clear by the defence with Holt waiting to gather. Nervous moments for the Albion back line. Pew now. Richardson. Cleverson wouldn't drop early enough. Holt wants more from his defenders. United need more in front of goal. Ronaldo was always going to shoot here. As soon as he brought it inside, Bert Haas. Holt needed more than the parry. And it was Gordso who just clicked it away from his goalkeeper. Taken away. This is Haas. And he's lost control. And is the United throw taken quickly? Richardson. Cleverson, just flash wide, two strong efforts Cleverson has put in towards Russell Holt now, and twice he's been denied. Haas, Bert Haas is in, can he find the cross? Oh, Dicchio is rooted to the spot. All across the face. Excellent move from Bernd Haas into the area. Dicchio's waiting. Might have thought he'd have been offside. Well, it's not been some parts of it. I mean, the football in the second half was very good. We just liked uh, the finishing touch of things. And maybe if Cleverson and Shaw had gone in, it would have changed the game. Because I think they needed a bit of inspiration at that point. As young players, they need a little lift at times. But in the main, they all kept playing, and they all kept wanting the ball. And we played some nice football at times. But um, I think the, the problem, even before the game, was always going to be the strength of West Brom, particularly in crosses and set-piece play, because they are a big, powerful team. Well, you have to say, fabulous win for West Brom, but as far as United goes, the squad rotation worked at Leeds in the previous round, but just not, did you, the gamble just didn't pay off tonight, did it? Well, they didn't win the game. But I think it's more important for Alec and Manchester United uh, that he sees the kids playing against a top-class opposition. In West Brom, a first division, they don't get too many games for going to meet against quality opposition like that. And as he mentioned there, the physical presence of them was a test for the kids. But they still play with such a freedom and freshness and attacking philosophy that it's, that it's good to sit and watch them play. Just too many kids in the side tonight, Steve? Yeah, possibly. I mean, West Brom and all mugs, they're a very well-organised, strong, physical team. And I think that was the difference. The football inside of it, there's no comparison. I think Man United outplayed uh, West Brom for, for the most of the second half anyway. But for pure physical uh, presence, uh, West Brom were, were dominant all, all over. A couple of bright spots for the manager, though. The, the performances of two, at the moment, fringe players really. Cleberson needs the match experience. I mean, uh, made his presence felt well, in tonight. did it. And I mean, everything went through Cleberson. And if they were going to score, it was going to be him that was going to score a goal. Ronaldo, I mean, he throws that many shapes and movements in. I mean, people are getting used to him, so, yeah. I mean, he's getting a bit boring and monotonous with, with the step-overs he makes, but uh, certainly Cleberson plays really well. How do you keep a player like Cleberson happy, Kenny, though? He's not in the team every week, is he? No, and it's difficult for him when he just comes over. Um, the Brazilians, I mean, he's a World Cup winner, so he's got great pedigree. 
But you try to settle in and then he just settles in after a couple of weeks, he's a wee bit bizarre and it's going to be difficult for him to settle down and that's why nights like this are equally as important for him as it is for youngsters. And Steve, a little flash of Ronaldo, I mean he's, he showed us those, uh, those silky skills tonight. He, he does, uh, I mean that's, that's in his locker, he, he's got that all the time but too many step overs for me, he'd it, it, be so frustrating. I think sometimes he can do it simple and he has to have them three step overs in the, in the one hit. Um, but he's a talent. He's a talent, but he's got to learn to use it a little bit better at times. 18 okay. years of age, he's going to be no, uh, no sure be too bad. OK, a final short break coming up, but we'll be back in a jiffy to conclude tonight's action with Everton's visit to the Riverside. Steve McLaren and David Moyes were once teammates at Bristol City, but tensions run high in this season's Everton Borough Premiership meeting. Tonight's cup clash held major significance for both sides, but especially for Everton, were desperate for a positive result. Ravison, Charlesby is in the middle, and it's loose to Jeffers, who again couldn't quite hit the target. Dave's a chain smoker. He thinks he struck lucky with some cheap fags. He got from Mick. One of 20 cartons he got from Tony, who's just finished a stretch for GBH. That he committed while he was working for Frank, who deals in all kinds of dodgy stuff. And it's supplied by people who will smuggle anything, do anything, for the price of a cheap packet of fags. Don't be blind to the crime. Call Customs Confidential on 0800 59 5000. Break the chain. Now, if one Northwest side needed a cut win more than most tonight, it was Everton. David Moyes' side have struggled in the Premiership, prompting unrest in the camp. All the pre-match build-up has revolved around Wayne Rooney's role in the side. Well, tonight, the young England striker started up front alongside Francis Jeffers and James McFadden. Devin Walker reports. It was Middlesbrough who enjoyed the best of the early chances. Mendieta has been a big hit since he moved to the Riverside and it was the Spanish international whose 25-yard curler was excellently saved by Nigel Martin. Everton's best chances fell to Franny Jeffers in the first half. He's still not scored on his return to Everton and he missed a golden opportunity on 34 minutes. Gravison's ball back in was bundled on by Carsley but Jeffers sliced over. Middlesbrough still posed a threat going forward. Macaroni's head a flashing path the left hand upright of Nigel Martin's goal. Everton's passing was crisp at times, but only served to highlight the lack of a killer touch that's plagued them this season. This time, Jeff is getting free again, but he scuffed his shot, and Schwarzer made a sharp save. There's been plenty of talk of Rooney's bust-up with the manager in the build-up to the game, possibly frustration at the fact that Rooney's only scored once for Everton this season. But there's no shortage of hard work from the youngster, winning the ball back from George Boateng and calling Schwarzer into action again. Everton's eagerness to get forward left some rather large holes in defence. Mendieta exploited them down the left, Nemeth was clean through, but Nigel Martin's decision-making was perfect and guaranteed a goalless half-time scoreline. Sadly, the finishing got worse as the night dragged on. You can't question the fact that Jeffers was in the right place again. The header looked good as well, but just drifted wide of the far post. Ask a toffee what would have made the perfect story. It would be Wayne Rooney scoring after all the talk of him losing his touch. But after excellent work down the right-hand side from Tony Hibbert, the 18-year-old saw his touch blocked by Danny Mills. It just wouldn't go in for Everton, and I suppose when it's not a striker's night, you might as well have a go from midfield. Lee Carsley did just that, tried his luck, but unfortunately with the same result. There was no questioning Everton's support throughout the game, but it was Middlesbrough who should have stolen the match at the death. But Ricketts' effort was blocked by the impressive frame of David Unsworth, and then Macaroni missed a seemingly open goal bring on extra time. David Moyes did his best to rally the men for one final flurry, but it was the mercurial Mendieta who almost snatched it for Borough again. A little more swaz on his free kick and it would have beaten Nigel Martin at full stretch. Everton were in desperate need of a hero and Leon Osman was only making his fourth appearance for the club 
and after a bit of Tomi to you in the penalty area, the ball fell to him, but Schwartz was there to make the crucial save. And so on to penalties, and the first four were a bit of a masterclass. Graveson, bottom left side netting, Ricketts, middle left side netting, Unsworth almost put his through the roof of the net before Zenden buried it in the bottom right. And so on to Leon Osman, the score at 2-2, but Schwartz got in the way again. And then it was back to perfect penalties once more. Danny Mills ignored the pressure and made it 3-2 with a thumper. James McFadden tucked his away. Nigel Martin almost got to Macaroni's effort before Alan Stubbs drilled it through Schwartzer to make it 4-4. So, down to Mendieta. One kick to decide the match. Cool as you like, he P-rolled it in to put Borough in the quarter-finals and knock Everton out. Well, what we've got to do now is make sure that we, we continue. Uh, I definitely feel as if there was something that was signs tonight. There was uh, a togetherness from the, from the players and uh, it showed in the field they were hard to beat. And, uh, you know, Middles were hard to beat as well, they're on a decent run, so we came here and we done okay. Brave face, Steve, but the honeymoon really over now for David Moyes. Oh, he knows there's a lot of work to be done. I mean, when, you, when you're in the bottom three, after a dozen or so games, you know, you're struggling. But, but it's the same squad as, as last year, isn't it? I mean, why have things changed so drastically? I don't have confidence. I mean, again, you need to score goals, and a lot more than that they're doing at the moment, and that's what it's all about, confidence. I mean, Everton are a good team when they work together. They work hard tonight, and, and you, as you can tell, David was pleased with the work rate. Advice to, uh, to David from you, Kenny? You, you might have been in that situation before, I can't remember. No, I don't know either. <laughs> but, but it's not, I mean, it's not the same squad as last year, because you brought five in, in the, before the, the transfer window closed, so it has been freshened up a little bit, but when it's not going well, you hear all sorts of stories coming out of the places, and the best way to get about it is just everybody unite themselves, and everybody get behind one voice, and maybe last year they they overachieved. Um, Thank, so. you. Thank you very much indeed. Now, a quick check on the two other cup ties played tonight. Aston Villa won comfortably against Crystal Palace 3-0, and Chelsea 1-0 winners at Reading. So, we're down to the last eight in that cup final at Cardiff is well and truly in sight. The draw for the next round, Bolton versus Southampton, Villa versus Chelsea, West Brom against Arsenal, Spurs against Middlesbrough. Quick word, lads, who's going to win it? Bolton? Chelsea. <laughs> well, I'd say Arsenal then, if you're going Chelsea. But um, Bolton, you know, they feel they've, they've got yeah. a chance, they've won at Liverpool, haven't they? Yeah, West Brom, I feel they've got a chance. They've put Newcastle and United out. Now they've got Arsenal at home. Uh, well, if they, if, they put, if they put all the kids out, maybe the West Brom will think they've got a chance, but, but I don't think they will at this stage. With United going out, Liverpool going out, it's an opportunity for Arsenal to... OK, so both of last year's finalists are out of this year's Carling Cup after a dramatic night. City and Everton fall as well, so the region's hopes rest with Big Sam and the boys from Bolton. Don't forget, Soccer Sunday at 12.30 when Burnley against Sheffield United is our main game and you've the chance to enter November's nationwide Goal of the Month competition. But for now, from all of the Soccer Night team here, it's a very good night.